Hello everyone, Dr. Mo, and I'm gonna talk about time series prediction. So we may have four types of time series prediction, depending on how many steps forward you wanna predict and uh, how many features you have. We may have univariate, uh, single step or multi-step prediction, and uh, you may have also multivariate single step or multivariate multi-step predictions. Today I'm going to talk about the first simple one, which is single variate and uh, single step in the future prediction. And we're going to cover the other three types in the future videos. Let's start looking at univariate single step time series problem with an example. It's a simple time series, uh, 1718 all the way down to 328, for example. And the problem is to look at these numbers and just predict the uh, next value. So just one number at the end, not two or three. And the way we want to solve this problem is to shift the whole time series uh, multiple times. Let's say we want to shift it two times. And the reason we want to do that is, for example, uh, these two numbers, 17 and 18, can be predictors to 19, which is the next value. And 18 and 19 are predictors for 20, and so on. So, in another word, all these columns on the left, the shifts, are going to be inputs to predict the labels on the right. In the coding section, we can create a signal like this, similar thing that we just saw. And we can shift the signal, uh, say, uh, three lags. For that, we can create a loop, for loop, and we can insert uh, to the data frame the values of shifted data frame. So uh, here you specify the value, which is the shifted, um, and the period for shift is i, which is coming through the for loop. And you can name the columns t minus i, and you can insert those in, always to the first location. And if you execute this, you're gonna see uh, zero shift is this column, and this first shift, second, third, and very similar to what we saw in the slides. Now we can use uh, t minus 1, t minus 2, and t minus 3 to predict t minus 0, which is the same as x. So we can create x and y. To do so, we first drop null values and in place true, and then select the columns that we are interested for x and y and we convert them to NumPy arrays because we are going to use NumPy arrays in LSTM modeling. And we can print X and Y to just make sure we are slicing it correctly, which seems good, and it is 2D. Uh, we need to do one more step and reshape the X to from uh, this 2D to the 3D uh, version. This is required by uh, LSTM. Um, and the number of feature uh, is, we know it's univariate, so it's only one feature. So we, we're going to have number one, and we can use the reshape to reshape it to the 3D. Now we can start the model training part. And for that, we need to define the model. Uh, we, we're going to use sequential from Keras, and we're going to add different layers to that. The first layer is LSTM with 4D neurons and activation uh, of ReLU function, uh, and input shape of number of lags and number of features, 2D. Last layer is dense uh, with one neuron, because we are uh, predicting uh, just the next um, step forward one value, uh, not two or three, and we need to compile the model and we can specify optimizer and loss function uh, as mean square error because it's a linear regression problem. 
uh, after fitting uh, then we can look at one example for example uh, we can use 300 301 and 2 and uh, then predict the next value which we kind of know it's going to be around 303 uh, but for for that we also need to uh, reshape this uh, and add number one because it's only one row and number of uh, observations or number of samples that we saw uh, above is just one in here because it's only one uh, sample and a number of legs and number of features uh, we already know um, and we can use the predict so if we run this we're gonna see the predict is almost 303 in the next video i'm gonna predict numbers that comes after this so prediction of multi-steps in the future